Hey guys, and welcome back. This is gonna be our fourth and final lesson where we are gonna be going over how to train the two elements of the anaerobic system that we were discussing earlier. So let's get started. So the anaerobic system or the anaerobic systems are capable of producing much higher rates of energy production than the aerobic system. So for um, explosive sports or sports that dem demand a much higher rate of energy production versus duration, think back to that chart in lesson number one, the anaerobic system and training them, is, the anaerobic systems and training them are gonna be much more important. However, the cost incurred by utilizing the anaerobic system as your primary energy source is a much faster onset of fatigue. So once again, like we discussed earlier, there's always a trade-off between rate of production and length of time for production. So depending on where you fall on that spectrum for your goal, that is going to be where you're gonna be focusing more of your effort when it comes to your training. Working on the anaerobic system allows you to generate more power. Um, and you guys will see that based on the types of workouts you're gonna be doing, but it does not result in an increased ability to sustain work over very long periods of time. You still need to be doing aerobic system training if that is what one of your primary goals is. Um, and like we talked about in lesson number two, um, for the tactical environment or for um, military occupation specific training, you are always going to be needing some form of aerobic training, but then different trades are gonna be, need more anaerobic training and some are gonna need less anaerobic training. So there are two primary systems when it comes to anaerobic training. Um, there's the lactic or alactic and the alactic system. So the alactic system is also called the creatine phosphate system, which you guys may have learned about in grade 12 biology. And it's also one of the reasons people supplement creatine um, when they're working out in order to try to help boost the system. So the alactic system is definitely our most ready and available system, but also produces energy for the shortest period of time. Um, the second system is the lactic system. Um, and a lot of people think of the lactic system and think of lactic acid as kind of a fatigue marker, but really that's not true. And um, new research showing that lactic acid may not contribute as much to fatigue as we once thought. And um, we can also go so far to say that lactic acid can actually be used in energy production. So there are some benefits to having lactic acid production. So these are the two main systems we're gonna be talking about. You can see this third system out on uh, the right there would be the aerobic system, which we've already discussed. Now this next chart is actually quite important. And if you guys are gonna get anything out of the last few presentation, if you could understand this chart, that would be great. So um, on the y-axis, we have the total rate of energy production or the power of energy production for each system. And then on the uh, x-axis, we have uh, the duration of the energy production. So we can see the alactic system or the phosphocreatine system has about 10 to 12 seconds of work that it can do. Um, the lactic system has about 60 to 90 seconds and the aerobic system can work for hours and hours on end as long as you stay aerobic. So these, this diagram in and of itself is one of the most important things to understand because your workouts will be easily classified by simply looking at this diagram. All right, so I'm gonna introduce you guys to a few basic principles next and then I'm gonna give you um, one framework for how to train the lactic system and one framework for how to train the alactic system. So basic principles, we talked about in the aerobic system, you need to train below 70% effort. This is the opposite for the anaerobic system. The anaerobic system is, is uh, designed for maximum power output, so all work should be done above 90% intensity. And you really need to use longer rest periods here. And this is where everybody goes wrong in terms of their anaerobic training. Um, think back to the second lesson where I showed you guys that sprint, sprint repeatability um, study that they did with the 30 seconds of effort, four minutes rest, 30 seconds of effort. And you saw that the aerobic contribution to the second sprint increased exponentially. So the shorter the rest you put in your workouts, 
the more the aerobic system is going to have to fill the gap because you will not be fully recovered. So if you really want to train the anaerobic system, you have to use longer rest periods to minimize the contribution of the aerobic system. Um, the other kind of myth that we want to dispel is that the goal is not to create as much fatigue as possible, but to train the correct system and to make sure we are constantly able to give above 90% effort. So if you're going to be doing an interval style session, you should be able to reproduce the same speed or the same effort with every single um, repeat or else you're going to start tapping into the aerobic system, which is what we do not want. So the first method we're going to talk about is the alactic um, interval. So the goal here is to obviously increase alactic power and capacity. And remember, this is that phosphocreatine system. So we are going to do three to six seconds of work with 60 to 120 seconds of rest. And oftentimes this may need to be more in order to be able to reproduce that effort over and over again. And a basic recommendation here could be 10 to 20 sets. And we really want to use exercises that are intended for explosive strength and power generation. So um, a hill sprint can be used here. A prowler can be used here. Uh, an air assault bike can be used here. I probably wouldn't jog. Um, you definitely want to sprint if you're doing that. I probably wouldn't use bicep curls. Um, you want something that uses a lot of muscle and produces a lot of power because that's what we are training for. Um, so think, how can I get the most bang for my buck when I'm doing this stuff? The second method is the lactic method. So this one's going to be obviously a little bit longer because we're looking to increase lactic energy production and improve anaerobic endurance. So try to slide that um, anaerobic system to be able to work a little bit further or a little bit closer to a minute versus in untrained individuals, maybe it's 30 seconds. So we are going to be doing 30 to 40 seconds of work with one to four minutes of rest. Um, and you guys will be doing that for one to two series um, with, let's say, four or five sets. So I would do, let's say, four or five sets of 30 seconds on, uh, four minutes rest. Then I would take an eight to 10 minute rest between the sets of four and then repeat four more sets after that in order to ensure that I've got lactic clearance and I'm able to recover to minimize how much the aerobic system is contributing to that work output. And so in summary, um, this was obviously a little bit of a shorter presentation, but anaerobic training is really about intensity. So you need to be able to replicate that intensity over and over and over and over again to be able to keep um, working at that 90% and above your ability, which means one thing, you are going to need to take longer rests in order to achieve that. These methods, the both the anaerobic training methods, can lead to fatigue a lot faster than the aerobic training methods. So you're going to need to use these a little bit more sparingly in your program, maybe two to three times a week, at most, even one to two times to start, and then you can build to two to three times. Whereas the aerobic system, depending on um, how much volume you're doing, you can essentially train that system almost every single day. I've, I've given you guys a couple of methods and a few ideas for exercises, but really there's an endless amount of possibilities for how to train all three of these systems. So as long as you follow the principles for training the aerobic and the anaerobic, system, you can't really go wrong. So experiment, play, um, look at what your goals are, look at the exercises you need to practice in order to achieve your goals and use them in your energy systems training. All right, well, that is it for me. That is it for our four lessons on the energy systems. Hopefully I was able to help clarify a few things. Maybe you learned a couple of new things um, while listening to these mini lectures. Um, so now it's your turn to do a small assignment. So for your assignment, I'm going to ask you to use the frameworks that I gave in the last two lectures here to design a aerobic workout, to design uh, anaerobic lactic and an anaerobic alactic workout. These don't have to be complicated. What we're looking for is really just um, your ability to, to understand the difference between the three systems. And then you can also, you can also, you have to also do um, the little quiz, the 10 question quiz on 
uh, your comprehension of these four lectures. So good luck. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing your guys' workout and have a great week.